Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a really interesting car I'm reviewing this week, which is a 2021 Mercedes S-Class. I know, I know, here in North America, we think of trucks and crossovers or SUVs in terms of types of vehicles we really want to own. But elsewhere in the world, having a car like this, which is a flagship sedan, is still considered the most prestigious things you can do. Especially if you have a chauffeur or driver, taking around and you are in the back seat of this thing, well, that is a true success sign. So that's the fun thing to do about this S-Class is, yes, it's not something we might own normally, but it is really interesting to go through this and figure out exactly what a flagship luxury sedan can do these days. Now you're going to find this interesting because the way I'm going to do a review on this uh, Mercedes S580 is different than any other way I've done before. Namely, I'm going to use a business technique or automotive engineering technique called SWOT. Many of you guys may already know this, especially if you're involved in business, but SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And these four categories define a product or a business or process. So I'm going to use this uh, well-proven business technique that we often use in engineering, for example, to examine the Mercedes S-Class and tell you what is good, which is a strength, what is not so good, which is a weaknesses, the opportunity for Mercedes to change this for the future, which is the old opportunity, and then threats, which is what could happen to the S-Class down the road if they don't evolve and they don't change. So let me go through those four categories with the new S-Class and that way you will know all the important things about the uh, S580 in a way that is very different from normal reviews. So first, let me go through the strength. Well, the strength of the S-Class is very obvious. It's the best-selling flagship luxury premium car in the world. And this is a type of car you want to be driven in because it's absolutely comfortable, super smooth, refined, so quiet, you really wonder if you're in a car or are you actually in a train of some kind. And it is kind of first class cabin feel in the back seat. It reclines, it's soft. I'll show you that in a, in a minute here. But it is the uh, ultimate comfort car if you have someone driving you around. That's the obvious, obvious strength. It has a four liter twin turbo V8 with a mild hybrid and it allows for amazing boost of power and torque right off the bat. So when you step on the gas, it goes like crazy. You think it is a sports car in many ways in terms of the acceleration. I'll talk about the handling a little bit later on, which isn't its strength, but the strength is comfort, luxury, uh, acceleration, beautiful, beautiful engine, and amazing technology all wrapped up inside gorgeous, gorgeous body. Here in the interior of the Mercedes S580, where well, the strength is also obvious, technology everywhere. If you love tablets, if you love the latest technology, well, you're going to really, really be taken back by the amount of things you find in this Mercedes with the large 12.3 inches digital cluster and a very large tablet style, I think it's 12.8 inches uh, center cluster here, which has almost everything crammed into this uh, amazing tablet and everything is very responsive and easier to use. Uh, but this is where my weaknesses also begin to show up now. So we covered a strength. Let me talk about the W for weaknesses. And it is mostly to do with the fact that there are absolutely no buttons anywhere. Yes, you get a nice big button to start and stop the engine. You get lots of controls on the steering, which is a bit complex. But here in the actual panel, to do anything, everything requires you to use the touch panel. Everything from controlling the seat to uh, controlling the uh, temperature, uh, managing the radio buttons. You gotta do everything on here. And while it's quite intuitive and it has a really fast processor, so it is uh, quick to respond to a finger, you have to take your eyes off the road to manage everything. I think in the name of technology, in the name of uh, clean design, and also following Tesla model, Mercedes removed all physical buttons of some sort. So that is my number one complaint in here. Secondly, the apps are actually quite well designed, but again, you have to keep on going deeper and deeper in order to use all kinds of features. And it is fun to play with actually. 
uh, because there's so much stuff in here and you could you could play for forever uh, but it is too much nesting because to get into something you have to go deeper and uh, keep on going into different uh, functions to try to figure out and again to me it's almost too much complex and too much option to play with I wish that Mercedes Club simplified this a little bit more and give us some switches and buttons uh, or at least make the steering wheel a little bit easier too. There's too many things crammed into the control here, making it difficult to manage things when you are actually moving around. So those are things that I'm frustrated with. There's so much a piano black also in terms of the aesthetics. And I believe the Mercedes have engineered a material that is hard to scratch but it is still very glossy and uh, it looks almost too much of the gloss. Uh, I think they could have uh, perhaps used um, either a carbon fiber look or something with a bit of a opaque uh, look so that it doesn't uh, shine so much and it's not so glossy. To finish off my gripes about the interior, uh, again, because they've gone all the way into uh, future technology, you don't even get USB-A, you only get uh, USB-C, which is fine, I suppose, but many of us still have devices that requires USB-A. So those are some of the things that uh, I'm complaining about. But the number one complaint for me in terms of the weakness within the SWAT analysis is the handling and the overall feel when you drive this car. I know, I know, this car is redesigned to be a chauffeur-driven vehicle where someone is in the back seat and the driver maybe is secondary. But here in North America, people who buy S-Class actually want to drive this car. And from that note, the steering is too light and has almost no feeling whatsoever. So uh, in the previous S-Class I've driven over the last 20 years, uh, they were all comfortable and extremely smooth, but they had a reasonable amount of road feel and actually quite a reasonable amount of handling. But the new S-Class is clearly marketed for a chauffeur-driven type environment because um, the steering is all devoid of all feeling. It's numb, it has no road feedback, and when you're driving the whole car, it floats and it almost kind of pillow-like feel. Uh, and that's uh, great for passengers, especially in the rear seat. But for the driver, this is probably the most boring car in terms of the steering feel. The engine is amazing and it has immense amount of torque, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but the engine alone cannot provide a fun to drive factor. The steering feel and the driving feel, of course, is the most important part of the driving character. So uh, to conclude my weaknesses, I think they could have dialed in a little bit more steering feel, a little bit more of a sharper feeling when you're actually cornering this car, and at the very least, uh, give us a slightly heftier steering effort so that we can enjoy driving this car if the owner happens to be the type of person who actually wants to drive this every single day. So now I've covered the strengths and weaknesses. What about the opportunity for improvement for this all new Mercedes S-Class? Well, it's a beautiful design, it's a beautiful interior, but you know what is so conservative, no one would know this is all new design inside and out. I think a Mercedes could have maybe taken slightly more radical view and do something like they've done with the new EQS electric full-size sedan. They could have taken a little bit more risk and make the design unique, uh, maybe something more futuristic looking. Uh, and even though that might upset the traditional buyers, because this car is going to be around for some time, I think it would have been worth taking a slightly more aggressive design. That's my feeling anyway, in terms of opportunities. Because too many luxury cars in this price range look all the same. And Mercedes could have taken a pioneering approach and be the one that will change the world. And so that's my uh, opportunity for the Mercedes. And of course, as I mentioned in the weakness section, uh, they could have made the driving feel a little bit better, uh, bring a little bit more of a road feel to the steering and give us a chance to actually enjoy driving this car uh, so that uh, if you are a type of person who wants to drive this every day instead of being driven in the rear, well, you can actually look forward to the daily drive. So now let me talk about the threat, which is a T in the SWOT analysis. Now in terms of threat, the main concern is that there are so many competitors in this flagship luxury premium sedan market. That includes the BMW 7 Series, the Audi A8, uh, even the Lexus LS and the Genesis G90, which by the way is changing and there's a new model coming out from Genesis. All these cars are actually a little bit cheaper than Mercedes S-Class, in some cases a lot cheaper, and provide similar luxury features uh, for the same kind of packaging. 
and most important of all some of those cars i mentioned are actually a lot more fun to drive and has an engaging driving character compared to the s-class so if you want to maximize the space in the back and you are going to be driven by a chauffeur or a driver most of the time yes i agree it's hard to beat the s-class but if you're the type of person who wants to actually own this car and drive it every day or drive it as uh, often as you want to use it as your normal car well uh, other cars i mentioned are better because they have a lot more driving sensation they have a better road feel and as far as the exterior design is concerned those cars look better as well not as conservative as s-class Frankly, I would say the Audi A8 is actually the most uh, engaging car to drive, despite the fact that it's also a flagship luxury sedan. And I think the new Genesis G90 that's coming out uh, is going to really blow the doors off all the competition in terms of technology, features, and perhaps even driving feel. So the threat for Mercedes isn't so much the fact that um, there's anything wrong with this S-Class, except for those things I mentioned, but really the fact that competitions are getting smarter and smarter with the type of flagship car they produce and sell and it's going to be harder to justify the price tag that we see in the s-class even though the s-class is always known as the benchmark uh, in terms of the luxury flagship sedan there are just simply too many brands that offer similar features for less money and they also offer better driving engagement so that's the last uh, thing to keep in mind as time goes we will see how this market continues to manage itself because more and more people are moving away from sedans to SUVs, even in the chauffeur driven world, uh, they prefer to have a, a kind of higher setting, a roomier SUVs these days. So that concludes my SWOT analysis and a SWOT review of the 2021 Mercedes S Class. Very, very fascinating car to drive, even more fascinating to be in the back seat here. And I really wish them the very best uh, because this is the very best uh, flagship sedan you can buy in the world. Uh, but there are some stuff that they can improve and hopefully as the years goes by, they'll continue to improve this model uh, because by then it will truly be the benchmark of the world. Thank you so much. I'm signing off for now. Uh, thank you again for supporting my channel and watching. If you can give me the thumbs up and subscribe, that would be great. And we'll see you around again in my next video. Thank you so much.